So who am I? Before I explain who I am, I think it's important to understand who I used to be. So this used to be me, Richard Smith. That part hasn't changed. Nobody ever laughs at that. <laughs> so Richard Smith, I was clinically obese. I was diabetic. I suffered with daily debilitating migraines, chronic fatigue, arthritic pains, depression, and anxiety. In my mid to late 20s, I could barely walk up the stairs without stopping uh, or being severely out of breath. Uh, I suffered severely with anxiety, uh, which would quite often prevent me from leaving my house. Uh, in fact, to the point that if there was somebody walking in the street or there was a car driving in the street, I was unable to leave my house and go to my car, despite it being sort of two feet away on the drive. Um, men used to think that I was rude, but it was more to do with feeling unworthy of the company of others, as sad as that sounds. So it, um, it was quite debilitating. So with a show of hands, and how many of you can, uh, can relate to any of the things on the, on, the, on the board there? So I should imagine quite a lot of us. So these are things that control our life, uh, and we tend to take them for granted, uh, as I did. Um, I put a lot of this down to getting older. I put it down to my genetics, and the truth is I was completely wrong, and I couldn't have been further from the truth. So despite uh, trying every sort of diet and lifestyle that you could think of, I, I, I had days uh, and, and spells where I would eat uh, unhealthy foods, but I did try to be healthy. I was eating off the, off the eat well plate and off the food pyramid, uh, and these things just further exacerbated my, um, my, my illnesses. Uh, I put further weight on, uh, I became more unwell, so I didn't really know what to do. Um, but I knew the bread bloated me, so I thought I'd begin there. So I began with restricting bread, um, I would, and anything sort of coated in bread, so breadcrumbs, you know, chicken nuggets, that sort of thing. Over the course of four weeks, I lost 28 pound. Now my intention wasn't to lose any weight per se, I just knew that bread bloated me, made me feel uncomfortable, and I thought if I can reduce that bloat, it would at least give the illusion that, um, that I wasn't so overweight, uh, and it would, it would make me feel a little bit better when I looked in the mirror. I looked in the mirror and I, and I hated what I saw. My, I had no confidence um, and it, 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 it controls your life. It, it puts you into, into an awful sort of position. Um, so that's what I started. I, I took bread out. I bumped into a friend of mine sort of soon after that I hadn't seen for quite a long time. Uh, and he was astonished with the amount of weight that I'd lost. So I told him what I'd been doing and he mentioned ketosis to me, or the keto diet, keto lifestyle. Now, to me, uh, that was a swear word. I'd never heard of it before, um, but I thought I must be. I was restricting carbohydrates that much that I must be ketogenic. So I went away, I'd done a little bit of research, and I ended up testing on these little urine test strips to see uh, what my blood ketones were, and I was not in, in ketosis. So despite restricting all these carbohydrates, I still wasn't producing ketones. Uh, it took me a further two weeks to become ketogenic. Um, and I'm not going to lie, they were the worst two weeks of my life. I genuinely thought I was going to die. I'm not selling this very well, am I? <laughs> um, and th there are reasons for it. Sugar's a drug and it's more addictive than heroin. Uh, and you, you quite often hear the term, you, you know, listen to your body. If there's one time not to listen to your body, it's when your body's craving a drug. So I carried on on my journey for, for the next two weeks. Um, and I remember I went to bed one night and I said to, to Amanda, uh, and, I, and I genuinely meant this. I said, look, will you come up and check on me in 20 minutes because I think I'm going to die? And <laughs> I genuinely meant it. That's how ill and unwell that I felt. Um, I didn't die, obviously. I'm standing in front of you. And I woke up the next day feeling like a million dollars. It was the best I'd ever felt. My energy was through the roof. And all of these ailments had gone away. Over the course of the 12 months, I'd lost 107 pounds reverse diabetes, I was now migraine free. And the migraines for me were the worst thing because these migraines were absolutely debilitating. So I'd get migraines every day to the point that um, I would go blind if I didn't take my medication. Uh, I had a continuous, a constant headache, and it's, it's a headache that I learned to live with. So this banging sensation in my brain continuously um, that you almost forget is there. It's that point where I lost my vision and became blind that I was unable to, to, to do things in life. Uh, and it affected everything. It affected me going places. It affected my job. 
Um, so that was the biggest sort of the biggest upside for me. My energy was now through the roof. These arthritic pains that I used to suffer with had, uh, had dissipated, and depression, anxiety. I, I think these are things that you can't get rid of. I, I think these are things that are on a scale, at least for me. But whereas they were all encompassing before and they took over my life and I was unable to do things, I managed to sort of squash these things right down and I, I was unable to leave my house. I was unable to go, I was able to go places. I certainly wouldn't be standing in front of you guys here today if, uh, if I still felt the same way. So I felt that I had learnt a secret, a secret that had changed my life. These, these things that I felt that uh, were genetic uh, and, and due to age, they weren't. It was to do with the foods that I was putting into my mouth. So I wanted to spread the word. I quit my job. I sold my house. I put everything that I owned into, into starting uh, my keto business. And initially, it began with keto coaching, which I did for free. Uh, over the course of uh, the sort of next year or two, uh, any profit that we made went into product development. Um, and we, we began producing sort of keto supplements to help aid people along their keto journey. And to promote this, I, I decided to enter a men's physique competition. Um, now this is, this might not seem like a lot to, to, to a lot of you, but this is uh, walking out into a group of people when you suffer with depression, anxiety is, 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 is crippling. I told everybody that I was going to compete on stage in essentially my pants. And <laughs> so to go from not being able to leave your house and tell all your friends and family that you're going to walk on stage in your pants. Uh, they begged me not to do it. And for that reason, I decided to push even further. I began training and there are a lot of common misconceptions in regard to being ketogenic. And one of them is uh, without carbs, you can't build muscle. But I knew that I was building muscle. I was becoming stronger, I was becoming fitter, I was becoming healthier. So I thought if there's one way that I can sort of prove that this lifestyle is working, it was to enter this competition and at least not embarrass myself. So I went to this competition and um, I trained for it all year. And backstage, as you walk out, there's, there's a curtain, there's this, a line there before you walk on the stage. Um, and I was the last walking out. And when it came up to the edge of the curtain, I stopped and I couldn't go out. The anxiety and everything got the better of me and I thought, what the hell am I doing? And I heard a friend of mine call me from the crowd and uh, he was sort of cheering me on. And I thought, you know what, I've told everybody I'm going to do this. And if I don't, they're going to be right because they all told me not to do it. So I lose my breath thinking about it. <laughs> so I walked out and uh, I know this sounds stupid, but I forgot how to walk. I forgot how to put one foot in front of the other. My legs went to jelly. Luckily, you couldn't see this on camera. I went out and I competed and I came second. I came second in this competition. Um, following that, I decided to pursue it further and I went back the following year and I was awarded pro status. The year later, I went back and I became the British champion. So I went from being clinically obese, diabetic, suffering with these debilitating migraines that would make me blind, suffering from depression, anxiety, arthritic pains, and I became the number one in my category in Britain in, in three to four years. <laughs> so this is what I do now. Um, I've dedicated my life to, to helping others and this is why I'm here today. I'm here today to tell you about my secret and the journey that I've been on and hoping that you can at least take away some of the information that's going to help you sort of progress uh, with your health and well-being. So we, after sort of two years of, uh, of starting Keto Pro, we are now product supplier of the year. We have uh, two times award winning on our Keto products. Um, a lot of you know that we've got a shop in Queen Street in Neath. And for those of you who've been there, a lot of you will know that I spend a lot of my time giving advice for free. So there's this uh, sort of misconception about, uh, you know, you're only doing this for the money. I can assure you I don't make any money. It, any of my <laughs> close friends and family will tell you that I've put an awful lot of money into the business and, it's, and it's, it's in order to help others and this is why I do what I do.